Hello and welcome to Club Talk Football. Vernie, we're back talking football. Uh, Neil Connell against Kilku. No better place to start. Ultra final. Yeah, it's a great place to start. And like, it's gas. When I saw the appointment, I'd mentioned it in this before. When I saw the appointment of Mickey Moore as manager of Kilku, you're just thinking, oh, there's a club now beating. Beat, they were going for what was it, nine in a row? They were beating. They made an appointment. And they were just like, we're going to try and get back to where we think we should be. We've been beaten in two Ulster finals. So there's no better man to go for only Mickey Moore. Mm, yeah, actually they've done six in a row. They were going for seven. They've now won, because they lost last year and they came back this year, they've won seven of eight now. But I was looking through some, some of his achievements over the course of his career. Now that he's after joining Kilku. Um, and I saw, an, like he actually managed his county, Derry while he was still playing and he was still in his 20s I think his late 20s at that time which was some going um, obviously he was involved with Eamon Coleman in 1993 when they won the All-Ireland he was a sort of right hand man and then took over the job afterwards but um, I, I came across an article from 1993 uh, and uh, it kind of went as a player Moran was one of Derry's best the ever reliable Mahara man played senior football for his county in all of the 15 standard positions started out as an orthodox forward and finished his playing days at wing half back his senior in the county debut in 1970 is one game that he'll never forget the occasion was a National League clash against defending champions Mayo and Mickey, who was a minor at the time, had just been drafted into the panel. The first go choice goalkeeper was involved in a car crash en route to the match and you've guessed it, yours truly was called upon to play custodian for the day. He recalls that his first touch was to pick the ball out of the net, but Derry went on to record a fine victory. That's something else. There's a couple, There's a couple of things I love about that. We need, we to, need bring to bring back wing half, wing half back. Yeah. But it's, that's no. an Ulster thing. They, they, they always talk about wing half back. Because I worked with Carlo Kane uh, in the Irish Star, Derryman, for a number of years. And it was always the wing half back and the wing half forward. Yeah, I love that. I, I just love that. That's pure old school. I try and keep that going wherever I can. You know, you go over to one of the lads, you know he's playing five or seven. Where are you playing? Wing half back. Um, but yeah, no, there's, so, actually, there's so many great stories there. It's obviously a lad, like Mickey Moore, who, who gave everything back to his county. Playing in all 15 standard positions, that is some achievement. That's a fair achievement at junior club level. But at senior county level, it's unbelievable. Yeah, you're often seen as a bit of a jobber when you're thrown into all 15 positions. Um, I know I've been there as a jobber a couple of times, and it hasn't been a compliment. It's it's almost been an in, I've taken it as an insult. But a, a jobber jobber is a real wrestling terminology. I like that. We should use <laughs> words like that more. Um, Brendan Devaney, uh, well, sorry, Mickey Moran was over Donegal around O two, and Brendan Devaney was talking about a time where they'd drawn with Dublin in a quarter final, and they were to, due to play them again a couple of weeks later. And uh, Mickey Moran said, you know, have two pints and leave it at that. Which the boys tore the the, ba the backside out of it all together, went into Temple Mar Temple Bar and went off the off the rails. But Brendan Deve and they lost the replay by ten points. But um, Brendan Devenny said of Moran at the time, he said, "Mickey Moran is a good man, and the world is full of snarling bollockses. Mickey Moran is a gentleman who tries to play football the right way. If that didn't get him all the way, then so be it. But I think some people should stick to their principles, and I wouldn't want to change him one bit. So it would be brilliant to see Mickey Moran go on to win this All Ireland and." Um, I saw an article possibly in the Irish News talking about him coaching Schlock Neil in 2017 that in the Ulster Championship they had three wides against Kilku only. Then against Oma they had no wides in the second half and did only two in the entire semi-final against Kilcar. Like the big team thing seems to him is that he wants to upskill his teams and have them play in pure football. He's not a guy who just wants them around doing laps of the field and stuck in the gym half the day. Yeah, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. And what Brendan Devaney said is true. Like, winning is 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 great. Everybody loves winning. But I don't think he would sacrifice his principles that he wants to actually kick ball. You know, and it's kind of something similar, maybe that you would have said. Probably that probably Kerry have probably you know done up maybe up until the. 2014 final when they felt like they had to revert to something mildly negative to get over the line and win in all Ireland. They've always stuck to their principles and play a ball. Mickey Moran's scenes are always really, really enjoyable to watch. They always try and play a football, and that's from 1 to 15. They, they invariably try and kick the ball, they try and attack off the shoulder, they try and well, play the game as people would like to see it played. You'd never hear anybody giving out about how a Mickey Moran team plays, and it will all people will always be. Uh, how should we say entertained when they go out to watch a Mickey Moore team play I wonder how they'll get on against Nave Connell this weekend because Nave Connell they beat Castle Rahan right so they had ten about 10 games in 10 weeks 
the uh, three Donegal finals and it was just a couple of days on the Wednesday and then the Sunday they had to play against Castle Rahan of Cavan the, the Cavan champions but um, I was talking to Leo McLoone and I know you were earlier in the week and I did a video piece with him which is on our game very entertaining guy but um, he was just talking about how they had gone out the Wednesday night and uh, the Thursday as well to settle or celebrate the Donegal title then they go and beat Castle Rahan they nearly fall away in the second half they're lucky they had a bit of a lead but they were in control against Clintibbert, the Monaghan champions throughout. You know, Conor McManus in there. I think the entire forward line of Clintibbert, the starting forward line, that is, scored just a, a one point from play. So they're obviously a very, very impressive team. At a serious side. We've kind of talked about this before. Like, you know, when you put them with, with Glenn Swilly, Guedor, Kilcar, you'd have to think, Jesus, the only goal championship is, is a serious, is a serious standard. And like when they co- when they came out of uh, of Donegal, the more than Guedor last year, you're kind of thinking, oh, there's a kind of famine has been ended of of sorts. They'll celebrate as they did celebrate clearly, but they were able to come and reproduce something to get themselves back into position. And then when they got a bit of a break. And they just they were outstanding against Clon Tibbert. It was an unbelievable performance. Just it was a total shutout. Clon Tibbert never really, never really looked like winning the game. They were always in control. The three points is probably quite flattering to Clon Tibbert. So after Donegal teams like not winning Ulster titles in over forty years, there's a fair chance that you could have back to back this year. It's going to be a really really interesting final. And um, two like Nave Connell, it's not the. Probably not, probably not the most glamorous style, style to, be to be watching. Very, 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 very effective, though. Nice. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very hard game to call. Kilku were beaten in finals in, I think, 12 and 16, narrowly enough. Um, they'd hope, like, if they could get over the line on, at the weekend, that you never know, they could win another one next year and another one after that, or be thereabouts anyway. Mm. But it's a big monkey on their back until they do get over the line. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of class in that uh, Glenty's team as well. Anthony Thompson, of course, is an All-Ireland winner. Uh, Leo McLoone is an All-Ireland winner. I think the brick is coming in in games. And then you've got uh, Kieran Thompson, one of the sweetest left foots going. Owen McGettigan, who was centre forward, he was man of the match against uh, Clon Tibbert. He scored six of their 12 points. So there's plenty of threats there. Just in terms of looking at, at who would be favourites for this game, it seems to be a case that Nave Connell, they're slightly sort of favoured, 8-11 to 11 versus 6-4. to 4. Not to labour too much on the odds. But uh, they're just about favoured here. Would you be some going after no title for uh, for no Ulster title for forty three years that Donegal win back to back then? It'd be unbelievable, and funny enough, just, just the fact that that Nave Connell are marginal favourites. I don't think Kil- Kilku will be in any way put out. If anything, it probably takes the pressure off them a small bit. After Nave Connell's performance against Clon Tibbert, people were kind of bigging them up a bit. So Kilku are coming in in the perfect position. Just when you were going down through some of the Nave Connell names, there, I don't know. Every time I hear like Kieran Thompson's name and Anthony Thompson's name, Anthony Thompson used to play with Donegal. I just always think of that episode of The Simpsons where they changed had to change. Their names to the Thompsons, and the two FBI lads are trying to explain to Homer that you know his name is now Mr. Thompson, and he just he just can't he just can't get it. every time I hear that name. <laughs> well, well, what a point to bring us to a close there. Actually, before we do, there are a couple of threats on the Kilku team, like very very complete sort of team. Um, just it feels like a never ending quest to win Ulster for them because this is their this is their seventh time here in eight years. They haven't won it yet. Uh, Connor Laverty is a name that stands out. Ryan Johnson, Jerome Johnson, uh, the Brannigans. So they're they're a very classy team. So uh, just to move on to the just overall, who are favourites for the All Ireland? Like Cara Finn seemed to be unbackable. Then next, and this is just in the or, in order of how they're fancied: Bally Bowden, Nemo Rangers, Nave Connell, Kilku, and then you you come all the way to sixteen to one before you meet Clonmel Commercials, who are up against Nemo Rangers team that they beat in a monster final four years ago clan mel against nemo uh you looking forward to this one i would not normally give you any credit but on your headline for the seamus kennedy piece you had seamus kennedy on finding nemo again and i just thought i doffed i doffed the cap now i rarely would because your ego is already it already means that your head can barely fit in the shot <laughs> but um yeah no it's an, it's a really interesting game that was one it wasn't a smash and grab so to speak because they were only two points down to win the game but like that was unbelievable 
was a big, big shock at the time. Nemo were the powerhouses of Munster, and you know, Michael Quinlan kind of just whipped on a ball, soccer style, and it was just, it was literally the last kick of the game. I remember chatting to Moss O'Shea about it and just how devastated they were. He was obviously playing for Nemo at the time. Um, commercials could have easily won in all Ireland that year. They were well up against Bowden in the semi final. Uh, Bowden ended up clawing them back. Uh, commercials, to the best of my knowledge, didn't score an extra time actually, and I think were beaten by five. But they easily could have been in an all Ireland final and won it. And now they're back in this position again. Any motivation that Nemo would have needed uh, for this game. Uh, they only have to look back to four years ago, uh, so they are they are roaring our favourites. But it's it's not a foregone conclusion. I think no more than we were talking about Sir Kieran in the hurling against Tullerone. Clamell come in in a nice position. They were it was a tough semi final against Mintown Man. They not very glamorous. Nine scores to seven, nine points to seven. But they got through. They gave themselves a chance to be in this position. I think they'll I think they'll quietly fancy themselves as well. Yeah, and there were a couple of points behind. I think with five minutes to go against uh, Mintown Malbay away from home and managed to dig it out. Now, the Nemo Rangers manager, um, Paul O'Donovan, he was doing a piece with Owen Cormican in The Examiner, and he said they haven't spoken about that game uh, four years ago, and I was just thinking... That's, that's not true. That, Could not be true. That has to be the greatest pack of lies I've ever heard, but sure, look, whatever he thinks himself. Like that, like, you know you know from being in the club dressing room, and I'm sure, like, the Mullins game will be referenced several times in your in your dressing room next year. No more than the, we were beaten in the county final by Rhinus, no more than that game will be referenced several, several times. times as well these things are talked about the whole time mm, of course they are you need to find a bit of fuel for the fire but I'm just looking at the Munster the, based on the semi-final lineups 10 players on the Nemo team and 9 from the Clonmel team from 4 years ago are, are still going to be starting or, or that's what, what the case was the last day that is a fair old turnover all the same but I have to say one of the, one of the stats that Owen Cormican had is that um, Nemo have conceded no goals since August the 17th in uh, competitive football and they've averaged, concede, averaged uh, conceding just 9 points for, per game recently so that's going to be tough to break down that's pretty miserly now in all fairness that that's as miserly as the come as it comes and you know with with the likes of Luke Connolly and uh, Paul Kerrigan in attack they're invariably putting up big scores obviously it was a turkey shoot against against Austin Sta or Austin Stats in the, the semi final an absolute mismatch Two seventeen 17 from play all from play yeah they, they, they probably won't um that, that that won't have done them any good actually at all to be honest with you because they would have been that's why you think Clamell are probably coming in in a better position I would still have Nemo as favourites and just based on the hurt of four years ago and proving a point and right and wrongs which GA teams love to do I would still have them as favourites and just on the, the the Clamell side of things again we were talking in the Hurling show about you know Michael Fenley and uh, Johnny Kelly and these boys double, double job and obviously Charlie McKeever is involved with David Powell Power set up in Tipperary now as well, so he's also double jobbing. And then you have Ricky Ronan is is his coach, and his brother Shane managed Moran Abbey to back to back All Ireland titles last year as well. So like give lads, give lads who are really really busy in those setups. But Charlie McGeever has always been busy. In fairness, he was over the Tip Miners when they got to the final, got to the football final in fifteen. I think if if I'm if I'm right, the same year as Tom Mel went on the run as well. So um, there's just if you go back through the years, the same name. Invariably, invariably keep popping up in different places your Charlie McGeevers your your Mickey Morns and all these guys they keep popping up lads that are just continuously been successful yeah and uh, Nemo have been in 16 monster finals how many of them have they lost do you think Jesus Jesus um I'd probably, probably say they've won, 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 won 10, 10 maybe lost 6 they've lost just 2 one of them was uh, was Clamwell commercial so you never know for Clan Mel. Hub tip is all I'd be saying. They've, they've, so, so you're telling me they've lost just two months for finals and they're not talking about the Clan Mel match. Stop. <laughs> no, no, so. um, there's an Ulster Club final on this weekend uh, other than the, the senior one. That's the intermediate one. Uh, between Galbally of Tyrone and Maher Clune of Monaghan. Now, uh, Malachy Clerken obviously got an awful lot of stick recently for uh, for his article after the, the Burris Lee Kiladang in Tipperary County final in Hurland saying... And, you know, and rightfully so. Yeah, so he had a couple of thoughts on club that, you know, that, that 
it's grand or whatever, but and it has its charms. But he did a very good piece about Maher Clune last week. Um, he was talking about how there was like subsidence of land in their area, and there was like this lightning fork of um, sort of like the land cracking and breaking that went all the way up towards the clubhouse, and the uh, it could have got on the pitch. And it happened during the middle of the night or early in the morning when no one was around. But God knows what would have happened otherwise. So they've had to kind of go hither and yon just to try and get fields to get themselves prepared and uh, Tommy Freeman is back playing this year so it's kind of a real community effort to try and keep this thing going so to get all the way to an intermediate provincial final is fair going it's fair going, it's fair going. I, like, I, I can remember that in the news at the time it was like I think it's it called a sinkhole is that what it's called well, I, I don't know if a, a sinkhole generally would be a massive wide circular opening in the ground I remember yeah. being down in Cancun of all places and uh, seeing one of those they're an amazing spectacle uh, I, I don't know if this would be considered a sinkhole because it's just like a lightning fork of a break in the ground oh, yeah. but we leave the geography there was a big side, oh, the and yeah. stuff that's yeah. up for the Mossander there, um, there was massive, there was massive yeah. fundraisers and things like that but well, I mean, Am I wrong in saying that Matt Raccoon is the place where a young fella wrote in a letter that they should have like an under seven or something exhibition match or something like that to raise funds and it went viral? I think, I'm fairly sure it did actually. It went viral maybe last year when it happened and they raised a load of funds and I think they have that match as an annual match now. I think they would have had it again this year. To the best, to the best of my knowledge, a young fella wrote in a letter I think and it went viral. And it was handwritten, I'm just after uh, finding it here. Yeah. Um, just have to find it here online. Uh, yeah, and this is an article from Northern Sound, October 2018. A GA charity match to raise funds for Maher Clue Mitchells could be going ahead after a seven year old's letter to his local club went viral. A player from Rat Oat under sevens wrote an open letter to his Mead club asking if they'd heard about what happened in South Monaghan and if they'd organise an under sevens charity match between the two clubs. So the letter was posted online, which I'm sure people can, can find. So, as ever, gas stuff happening in the GAA. Um, looking at Gal Valley, right? So um, they won their first adult championship in over 60 years, beating Pomeroy in the Throne final. Um, Cahar O'Kane did a brilliant piece um, in the Irish News, which people can check out if they go to Cahar's uh, Twitter page. But uh, he was talking about how it was a heavy, heavily Republican area and there was all sorts going on during the Troubles and all sorts is quite a euphemism because the stuff that happened was uh, beyond serious. But I'll just take a couple of snippets from the, the piece and definitely go and read it. But he was talking he, he, about an area between Galbally and Kappa, which is nearby. And uh, this is the quote. But in January 1972, loyalist gunmen timed it right. They squeezed through the bollards and went into Ruby's Bar where they shot and killed local man Dinny Hughes. Owner Francie Ruby Boyle was wounded, as was Pat McCall, who died a short while later after a fall, recuperating from his injuries. That was the first loyalist attack in the area, and the last major one would be in Boyle's Bar 29 years later, where provisional IRA members John Quinn, age 22, Dwayne O'Connell, 17, and Malcolm Nugent, 20, were ambushed in their car as they pulled up outside the bar in early March 91. A fourth man, 52-year-old civilian Thomas Armstrong, was also killed when the gunman fired through an open toilet window after those inside had barricaded the doors. In the 30 years in between, young men were carried shoulder height to their rest far too often. And he was also mentioned um, a character named uh, Martin Herson, um, who was killed. Um, he, well, he was actually, he died in the hunger strikes in 1981. And there's a tournament since 1984, I think, tournament run every two years in his name. So it's a place just heavily loaded with history. And apparently they've got an unbelievable setup, very proud of their club put huge amount of fundraising over the years and they've got like four pitches and three of them are floodlit so just one of these areas huge pride in the club and the community yeah that's yeah, deep that's stuff now in fairness and um, you, you can imagine uh, no, no more than no more than like some of the deaths in Boris Lee in the last 15 months how that brings everybody together like that that's the club is such a place of um, it's almost like a sanctuary through all those hard times that just bonds people so close together through hard times I can't imagine like that there are awful things that would have happened um, the, cl the club would just have bond and like be so tight after things like that mm, absolutely um, there's a Munster Club Intermediate Football Championship um, final on this weekend uh, Temple No against St Brecon's of Clare I think pretty much everyone is going to fancy Temple No to win this and of course as we keep saying the All-Ireland 40 to 1 on in here so that's that's <laughs> that's as heavily fancied as a team is going to be um, the reason being is quite simply because of all the inter-county standard players they have. Adrian and Killian Splan, 
Gavin Crowley, Tyg Morley, they're all on the team. So Temple No beat Aerog of Cork, who have the likes of Daniel Goulding, Ronan O'Toole, um, Kieran Sheehan, who's back on the, on the Cork panel after being away in the AFL. They beat them 117 to 12 points. Going to be very hard to make a case from St. Brecon's. They're a team now from the Doolan and Listoon down of our area of uh, Clare. They beat Mike Harkey Burris who are the tip champions, 12 points to 5. Aidan Davidson scored 8 points, but they're going to be huge underdogs here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to make a huge case for St. Brecon's. No, but, no, but I'd say you're probably always welcome down around that area down there, yeah? <laughs> yeah in general, I'm welcomed uh, down in Clare because of uh, my thoughts under 2013 All-Ireland and how they never backed it up. But we won't bring I'm up sure that old I'm thing. sure you're a regular visitor to Liston Barn and all, I'd imagine. <laughs> oh, is that right for the matchmaking? <laughs> no, uh, I I don't know. I mean, there's there's plenty of other places you can go to do a bit of matchmaking if you want. Kilkenny would be a good well, that's spot. That's true. That's true. Cork too. support spot. Well, I have to say. Until, until Club Talk is sponsored by Tinder or Bumble or something like that, I'd say we'd probably just stick to the GA. Um. So that's the the final game of the weekend. Um. Anything else worth touching on? Or have we it all said? No, I'd say we could all say it. As I said there, like St. Saint, Saint Brecon's are going to be really, really up against it there. Like Temple Noor, top class outfit. Just, there's, there's so many, just, there's, you know, your handful of inter-county players in an intermediate club. Like, they, they'll just, they just stand out. As someone once said to me, like, about a good player standing out against inferior opposition, like, that they'll stand out like an oil sheik in a synagogue. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they'll just, like, they, they'll stand head and shoulders above. And at that level, it, and particularly with a couple of those guys out around the middle of the field, they'd be just so hard to break down, like. So hard to break down and get the ball away from them. I'd say we have the height of it said now, but just one final comment, seeing as you mentioned your Bumble and your Tinder profiles and God knows whatever other profiles you have. That light above your head is bouncing just lovely on your nose. So if you take a screenshot of that and put it up as your new profile picture, I'd say the matches will go through the roof. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate it when people look out for me like that. Yeah, well, that's me. I, I've got your best interests at heart. Right, that's it for Club Football Talk. Let us know if there's something we missed. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube.